Climate change has happened over millions of years, off and on, and so that in and of itself may not be unique. It's probably happening at a greater rate than what it has in the past. And of course, when you raise the temperature of the water and ice caps start to melt, you change the salinity of the water, which is going to affect the life forms that are dependent on a certain uh, level of salinity and, and food source. So it is a chain reaction. And um, what can be done about that, we don't know. What can change it, we don't know. I think it's important to, to be aware that it is happening and, and to take a look at, is there anything that can be a human intervention? Um, or is this just going to continue to be something, a natural phenomenon that we, you know, have to embrace and work with? We're starting to see lots and lots of, of uh, glacial melt coming off of large ice caps. That's adding to the ocean. At the same time, there are areas where land subsidence is going on. So the earth is, uh, on some coastal areas, is sinking. At the same time, we get sea level rise. And the combined effect really starts to add up. And when you think of a large part of the population that lives right along coastal areas. Or think about things like naval bases or airports that are all right around the uh, uh, a lot of low-lying areas. So even as we start to look at just a few inches of sea level rise, it can make a huge difference for a lot of people. Maybe the, the real hidden cause is the oceans are actually warming up a little bit. And as that water volume warms up, the volume increases also. So we're getting some expansion of the ocean. So that sea level rise occurs in two ways. There was a study done uh, right next door at Hopkins Marine Station looking at uh, a small local crab, the porcelain crab. It used to be very abundant here, but it turns out that the water is just around the upper uh, limit of uh, tolerance for this crab and even a uh, one degree increase in the temperature of water here may be enough to really push this crab over the edge which means that they won't be able to live comfortably here in Monterey Bay and maybe we'll only find this little porcelain crab farther north where the water's a little bit cooler. We're already starting to see other kinds of animals that used to be very common here in Monterey Bay uh, being less common and, and we're seeing their distribution shift northward which is a good indication that the waters here are a little bit too warm for their comfort. Specifically, a lot of ocean changes are related to the amount of carbon dioxide we're putting in the atmosphere, and a lot of that ties right to energy use. So my recommendation, if you want to do one thing to help the oceans, in addition to just learning more, is every time you use some energy, drive somewhere in your car, flip a light switch, we use energy all day long, Every time, that's a choice to be very careful about using energy and not use any more than we need to. The more energy we save, that's a lot less CO2 in the atmosphere and that makes the oceans a much healthier place in the future.